books really changed my life. One of them was the law of attraction. Mm. Once I learned that everything had a frequency and I can control my own frequency, I started to eliminate negative thoughts from my mind and change the way I thought. Get anything I ever wanted, I have to put the action. And by reading another book by Brian Tracy called No Excuses, taught me that if it's meant to be, it is up to me. All right, guys, got someone I've known for a long time here, Mark Lee from Pull Up VIP. First podcast too, right? Yeah, first podcast. Damn, breaking the virginity. Yeah. I'm sure you get asked to go on them all the time, so. All the time, but I wanted to start it off with you. Love it, man. Appreciate that. You're yeah. someone I've known for, what, eight years now? Yeah, eight years. I think you were the first uh, ride I've ever booked, first driver I've ever booked. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And back then I was broke, dude, so I appreciate you like hooking it up back then, you know? Yeah, man. I'm just glad, you know, I remember you just... Like, yo, can I make you a jersey? You know? <laughs> that was my classic line, dude. That's how I got in the door back then. It's like, bro, yeah, bro, let's make <laughs> me a leopard jersey. Sure, let's go. I had just seen you made one for Supreme Patty. Yeah, and that's uh, how we met, right? Yeah, through Patty. Yeah, yeah, he was he was living out here back then, right? Yeah, yeah, he was big big at the time doing the lemon. Yeah, the eyes. do you remember back in the day the Nelk boys used to live at that house? Which one? The one on the Harbor Islands over here. Where you where I think you were there with me. Was I? Yeah. It was probably a while ago. I don't even remember. Yeah, that's when they were first starting off. Damn. Yeah. yeah they've come You were around in that circle. Yeah. No, all those kids. It's cool to see where everyone's ended up now. Yeah. You know? Well, a lot of them fell off, and then there's some that are still around now, but it's yeah. cool to see the trajectories everyone went. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think when I went in your car, I was with Jet Set Fly. Who's that? Exactly my point. <laughs> <laughs> Just Fly? Jet set fly. Oh, yeah, I don't, don't even know. know. That's funny. Is um, he big now? No. Oh, okay. that's what I'm saying. There's two <laughs> different trajectories. Yeah. Like some people take off and then some people kind of fall off. Yeah. Um, but I'd love to learn how you got started with the ride, ride service industry. Uber. So you started off as a regular Uber driver? I just, I was starting off with an electric skateboard company back in the day. And I was already connected with a lot of people because I started off back in the day um, learning about social media and I started to work a few big people and along the way um, I ended up meeting this electric skateboard company they were just starting off and I wanted to help them out their social media and I was connected to a few big people so I was like all right I'll fly with you to LA we went to a flowrider party at this flowrider party I ended up meeting Jake Paul there and he fell in love with the skateboards at the time I didn't even know who Jake Paul was, mm. you know, and I'm at this crazy NASCAR party full of celebrities. Um, and I was like, hey, if you guys know any celebrities in town, I would love to come bring them a skateboard and let them try it out. And um, I was there and he's like, I'm a celebrity. And then Jake Paul, he at the time, he had like a million followers on Vine at the time. Mm -hmm. And I went and met up with them. We started riding skateboards around. He fell in love with the product, and we became best friends. Wow. And um, it's great to see, you know, all these people that you meet at an early age, you know, just become superstars. Yeah. You know? He's and crushing it now. He's crushing it, and uh, it's amazing, you know? All these friends that we made along the way um, became superstars now. And, you know, if you don't know them back then... You can't get to them now. No, you're not getting it now. Yeah, it's so funny looking just so innocent. Not even even you, you're you're big time now, you know. It's 11 million followers on social media now. If you don't know Sean Kelly from back in the day, it's hard to get a hold of him because how are you going to compete with 11 million people sending you a message? Yeah. They get well, buried. Well, it's mainly just because, like, so many people hit me up now that it's, like, I kind of have to be closed off in a way. Yeah. You know, because I'll just get, like, used or scammed or whatever. Exactly. You know? A lot of people are messaging me now and you don't know, like they have a verified blue check mark and they're like trying to, they're, they're starting off with like a, Hey, and then they're like trying to sell me something. They're like, <laughs> Classic. They're like, uh, can I help you with your social media? Yeah. I get those all the time. The yeah. giveaways or like growth or, or, yeah, or yeah. making shorts. I get making shorts every day. Yeah. But I just started off. I was in LA. I was, my skateboard broke down. I was pushing the skateboards. I was in love with the product. I started Riding electric skateboards through LA, introducing celebrities to it, 
One day my skateboard this episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash DSH and get on your way becoming your best self. My fiance Ariel plays a big role in my mental health, helping me realize my true potential. Everyone's trying their best around you, so take time to appreciate someone close to you. I've tried therapy in the past and it helped me go through some tough times when I was in college dealing with mental health. I was on prescription medication. I actually had agoraphobia when I was in college and therapy helped me figure out some answers to how to fix that problem. For two months, I couldn't even leave my house or I would have a full on panic attack. So I love companies like BetterHelp that can get therapy in front of the masses. But therapy definitely helped me get better and I definitely appreciate companies like BetterHelp because it's completely online and it's conveniently suited to fit your schedule and accommodate life surprises. Fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a licensed therapist today with the freedom to switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Visit betterhelp.com slash DSH to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash D-S-H. Check them out now. Breaks down and somebody says that, uh, why are you stuck here? I'm like, oh, I'm waiting for a cab. And they're like, cab, take an Uber. And mm. I'm like, what's an Uber? <laughs> and they're like, here, here's my code. Put this code and you'll get a free ride. So I put my credit card information. I booked the ride. It was free. I fell in love with it. I got back home. I downloaded the app. I put my mom's car on there and I started driving Uber. And my first week I made 500 bucks. Wow. And to me, that was like, whoa, because I had a salary with electric skateboard company and that and I had to wake every two weeks to get paid. Mm -hmm. So that week that I didn't get paid, I drove Uber and I made 100, 500 bucks right away, only working three days. And I was like, what the <laughs> f this is crazy. It was like, you like that moment. And uh, I immediately went even harder. Every time I, I leave work, I'd go work, drive through the night. And my next week I made $1,200 on Uber. And I told the electric skateboard company, I'm like, hey, you know, I think I'm going to have to do something different because this Uber thing is paying off pretty good. And uh, I, everything I do, I go 100%. And literally, I just started driving Uber, stacking up my money. And it was time to go to another level. And I convinced my mom to go with me to dealership and buy me a Suburban. Mm. And put it on her name, and I would make the payment because I didn't have good credit. So how old were you? I was in my twenties. I don't know exactly, but it was like ten years, like ten, twelve years ago, and I think it was twenty thirteen. Okay. So that was probably around twenty five, twenty six, I think, and. It just really changed my life. Mm. Having going, knowing that I can go out every single day and control my own hours and make as much money as I want gave me the freedom to really change my life. Mm. And, you know, given the opportunity, I just go at 100%. And as I started to drive Uber, I realized that I was really good at communication with people. I was really good at talking to people, they get in my car, they instantly, I would get comfortable, get comfortable with them. And along the way, I wanted to make my car different. Mm. You know, I heard that sometimes if you only do something 10% different, like a restaurant or something, you can really just change the whole game. Mm. And I really went at it a hundred percent. I first, I started off with some, putting some LEDs in my car. And then the LEDs, I wanted to put more. I put, I created my own LEDs and I put it in the pockets of like the bottles. So the bottles would light up in <laughs> different colors. Then I put LEDs under the pockets. Then I changed the light in the ceiling. I put blue lights. So it'd be like black light inside the car. Then I put like, I, ha I bought some neon glasses and I had everybody in the car like wear the neon glasses. Next thing you know, I wanted to do the sound system in the car. The next thing you know, like, I went to a T-Pain party, not knowing that I was going to a T-Pain party, but it was an Xbox party. I show up there with my friend Patrick, and not knowing what it was, I just walked right in. There's, like, Xboxes everywhere. I see T-Pain. I go up and introduce myself. I told him about what I do. Told him I want to take him for a ride. 
Next thing you know, I'm filming a video. He's like, hey, I'm going for a ride next. And this guy overhears it. And he's like, can I go for a ride too? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I take him for a ride. I show him my car. And he's like, hey, I want to gift you with something. He goes over and gets me a gift. I unwrap it. It's a brand new Xbox. Wow. And he's like, my name is Aaron Greenberg. I am the GM of Xbox. Holy crap. And it was just like, whoa. Those are he's hard like, to get these days. He's like, listen, I'm the GM, I'm the general manager of Xbox. I want to give you this Xbox. It's a limited edition. There's only a few of them in the world. And I want you to be the first one to have this Gears of War custom Xbox for you. Damn. And I was like, wow. You know, this Xbox is probably worth a lot of money. But I'm not a type of person that just takes something, right? I want to add value. Because I think that's the most key thing to life is learning how you can add value. Mm. So what I did, I went to the drawing board. I got my friend Zach, who was an inventor. I'm like, Zach, listen, I have this crazy idea. I need you to help me figure out how to make this happen. Shout out to Zach on that. The genius inventor here in Fort Lauderdale. And I actually lived with him. He was a, a, an important part in my success. Nice. So Zach was this crazy, like, he looks like Jesus. <laughs> I was living in his house. He has a pet lemur. He has a zombie apocalypse car. This guy's different. And I'm like, Zach, I need you to help me invent how to put a TV here and here so I can make this Xbox experience happen. So I went into to a Best Buy. I found the biggest TV I can find. It was a 27, it was a 24 inch TV. And I put each one behind the headrest. Mm. And Zach came up with a zip tie system that went into the four screws there and zip tied it to the headrest. And we oh, and we made four um we put we made two TVs on each side that were 24 inch, and it really changed the whole experience. Mm -hmm. Now I created a video and I sent it over to uh Aaron Greenberg from Xbox. And he posted me to 10 million people on Xbox Twitter account. Damn. So that kind of started the relationship with Aaron and Xbox. Full and, circle moment. And just talk about being at the right place at the right time, getting an opportunity to get an Xbox, putting it in your Uber car, which nobody, I never seen that before. No. And just creating an Xbox experience out of my car. And that really, after that Xbox and those TVs in my car, it led into me creating my own systems in the car that would communicate with the passengers and also allow them to play YouTube videos. Mm, dude, you must have had Changing five star reviews on, you, on Uber. You must have been the most highly reviewed driver. I wanted 10 stars. Five <laughs> stars wasn't enough because I was going to engage you on so many different levels from site See, I even created my own um, juice that I would put into the fog machine yeah. that would give, you would taste the chocolate in the air. <laughs> it's like those uh, <laughs> Vegas casinos that put scents in the air. Yeah. You had that in the car. Yeah, I, I, I got like um, some, um, some like organic, like ones that my friends helped me find from like yeah. Whole Foods and I would mix it inside the, the, the we even created our own, um, smoke juice that was like organic. Wow. My friend Zach, yeah. So it was like easy to breathe in. Dude, you went all so, out. Uh, bro, all out is not even the word. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because if you go through my Instagram, Sean, like you've seen it, over time you can track the progress. It's not, it's not like luck. It's I envisioned it in my mind mm. and little by little I upgraded and upgraded and each time somebody's like, yo, you can't make your car better. And I was like, boom, I, I made it that. better. It level up. There's always levels to it. Yeah. Like even here now, I'm sure there's, you're, even though you're super successful now, there's always levels to it. Oh, there's more. I feel like I'm just getting started. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love that you're on a podcast explaining the story because people will just see you with a celebrity online. They don't see the work that went into that. Exactly. Like you've driven every A-list celebrity in the world though. I tried. I mean, quite the I, list. Could I, you I've, name some of them? people watching um, okay so the biggest one that um is well known as drake mm -hmm. 
He promoted me. He loved my experience in the car, and he did a full karaoke experience in my car and paid me. That's awesome. He gave me, you know, a hundred dollar tip at the end. He's like, yeah, this is for you. But it was, it was just the fact that like the first time I met him, um, I was actually at his album release party. I was driving this girl named Yes Jules. Mm -hmm. um, and Yes Jules at the time, she was one of the biggest Snapchatters in the world next to DJ Khaled and Dr. Miami out here. So she was kind of on my radar that I wanted to build a relationship with her. And over time, um, we became really good friends. And I ended up driving her to Drake's album release party. Like every single th event that she had, I was driving her around and became really good friends. And I had her in the back seat of my car. And all of a sudden, I, we pulled up a little early. And all of a sudden, I see police and things shutting down. I'm like, what the heck? <laughs> it's the president pulling up. And it was Drake. <laughs> he literally, Sean pulls up like president. He has five or six Escalades, 10 motorcycle cops. It's like the craziest thing. You think that the president is really pulling up. They're closing down streets and he pulls up the first car. He rolls down the window and he walks straight up to my window and leans on the side of my window. And he's like, bro, this is amazing. And then I was like, hey man, thank you. You know, he's like, yeah, hey, I've been watching you. Keep up the good work. Wow. So he already knew you. I guess. That's awesome. And he comes up and, and he says hello. And I'm like, bro, I'd love to drive you one day. And he walks away. And I'm like, I don't even know if I can even get into this party. Like, he knows me now. Maybe I can get in. And then uh, I texted Jules. I'm like, you saw what happened. Like, he knows who I am. Maybe I can get in. She's like, yeah, I'm going to talk to his manager. Next thing you know, they come out, grab me. I'm inside, hanging out with his dad. And like two months later, he ends up going... It was, he, he had he had two concerts that were sold out here in Miami. Yeah. He goes to the top restaurants, Swan in Miami. And I somebody told me, he's like, yo, Drake's inside. And I was like, wow, really? He's like, yeah, he's inside with DJ Khaled. And I was like, wow, it's amazing. So I had some clients in between. So I went and I took the clients and I came back. I saw that Khaled's car was still outside. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to post up here. I'm going to set up the red carpet. I'm going to show Khaled, like, my car, put on the vibes, put on the red carpet, have Khaled's music blasting. <laughs> and when Khaled walks out, I'm going to give him the experience and, like, give him something to post about. I look around, and Khaled's already in his car, and he's took off. Ah! But I look across the street, and there's Drake. So I immediately switch gears. I played sicko mode. <laughs> And all of a sudden, Drake looks at me, and he's like, what the f He's like, so I immediately got to walk over him. I dab him up, and Grumman puts him in my car, and he's like, take him bowling. And that night was crazy. Wow. He did a full Instagram moment in my car, posted it on his story. Mm -hmm. While the concert was still going on, I was still on his story. Legendary. With sold-out shows. Dude. That's huge. Grubman's a good guy to know, too. He's an amazing person, and he's always been the most humble person. He always supports everything I do, and, you know, can't thank him enough. He's he's an amazing person. And, uh, King of Miami right there. Yeah. That's big time. Yeah. That's a crazy so story, you have, though. If you have Drake and David Grubman, you know, you know, vouching for you, that's all you need, you know? You can't get and, much higher than that. Yeah. And you always got to have a clean name, you know? No matter if you met me 10 years ago or 20 years ago, I'm still the same humble person. Mm -hmm. I'm still always adding value. There's people still, people that come up to me and say that I've changed their life. And I, I just, I'm just me. You're the same you know? person I remember from eight years ago. Yeah. We just rekindled right now. Yeah. Like we haven't seen each other in eight years, but you're the same exact person, which is good, man. No, we've seen each other before. Where? Uh, um, there was like, bro, we, we were at this, I think it was a Rufus Del Sol in Miami event Sol. in Wynwood, and we ran into each other. Oh, was it like during uh, Art Week or something? I shit? think it was Art oh, Week. Uh, I, I barely remember We that, went but... to like this warehouse, and then oh. we ran into each other. Yeah, I remember that. Some event. Yeah. Okay. It might have been Crypto. Might have been Crypto Week or something. Crypto Week, yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But still, dude, no, you're the we're same. We're always running into each other, and each time we're on new levels. Yeah. No, it's you know? important that you said that because in Miami, there's a lot of scammers, and people don't care about their reputation. Yeah. But it's important. Yeah. You know? But out here, dude, there's some weird scams. Do you read shit. any books? I, I'm more of an audiobook guy. Yeah, me too. podcaster, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? W- what books are... So, I want to say, like, two books really changed my life was one of them was the law of attraction mm, right? classic because it was learning that i have the power to attract anything i want into my life and learning that everything in life revolves off of attraction and i can go and attract anything into my life learning that everything has a frequency once I learned that everything had a frequency and I can control my own frequency, I started to eliminate negative thoughts from my mind and change the way I thought. Mm. So every thought had to be a positive thought. I eliminated negative thoughts. And what I learned was that was only one secret to it. Learning about the frequency was one thing, but learning on... Um, learning that in order to get anything I ever wanted, I have to put the action behind it because nothing will be given to me. And by reading another book by Brian Tracy called No Excuses taught me that if it's meant to be, it is up to me. Mm. And the moment I started to realize that, that all right, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. I have to go get it. I have to go attract it. I have to go do it. If I don't put in this work, it will not happen. So even if I go broke, I got to go do it. Mm. I got to complete something. Right. And even if I don't complete it, at least I'll be one step closer to my dreams. And that always leveled me up, leveled me up. I love that, dude. To the point where I had become the top driver. I had Drake talking about me. I had... I drove in, I drove, I drove, um, Kim Kardashian's best friend, Food God. Oh. He became a really close friend of mine. Nice. I met him through, um, this guy called Murder Murphy. I know Murder. So I met him through Murder and, um, and Murder was kind of his manager at the time. And he was like, listen, I'm going to connect you, you know, with my guy, Jonathan Food God. And I want you to meet him. And I'm. I couldn't meet up with him when I wanted to meet him, but I met up with him. Um, he had broken his phone, and he was at the Apple store in Brickell fixing his phone. And I went and I met him underground in a parking garage where nobody like would bother him, and we can do our video. I rolled out the red carpet, filmed the video, and like a month later, he posted it. But when he posted it, he was at dinner with Kim Kardashian in Miami mm. and it was like two chains wedding and there it was like a big media thing in Miami he I didn't know what was going on because I was filming some stuff with Supreme Patty mm-hmm. but everybody started blowing up my phone I'm like what the heck's going on and Kim commented on his post come pick me up wow so I never got to meet Kim but just the fact that she said come pick me up my social media blew up again damn that's big time, dude. Yeah, you're probably the number one celebrity driver. I would say. In- well, I'm, I'm saying probably celebrity driver. There's probably a lot of celebrity drivers, but none of them focus on an experience. Right. They just pick them up. <laughs> they just You're, you're just going to be that guy that just picks you up and drops you off. You're not going to be memorable. Everybody that gets in my car, I make it a show. If I'm coming to pick up Sean Kelly the most famous podcaster in the world. (laughs) I'm going to roll out the red carpet and make his experience special. I'm going to have his branding on the TV. I'm going to have some smoke machine. I'm going to have some lights. I'm going to have champagne ready for him. Just like when I picked up Dan Bilzerian in Miami. I had everything lined up. That came through uh, Vitaly. He's blowing up right now. Yeah. Well, Vitaly's a good friend of mine for a really long time as well. I've known him for like 10 years. And... I was like, Vitaly, I want to just go pick up Dan Blazarian and give him an experience. I love his energy. Like, you know, he gets all the girls. I want to be around this guy. You know, <laughs> maybe I can learn something. I want to go pick him up. I roll out the red carpet. Dan hops in. I had 
Dan Bozerian song playing with T-Pain in the car. I get 10 Brazilians like I'm Dan Bozerian. Oh, I, I remember yeah. that one. That was so a So I had that pulled up. The music bumping, smoke shit up. I give him a gold bottle of champagne. You can see in the video of him just in my car, having a good time, drinking the champagne, passing it to all the girls, girls sitting on his lap. I, I'm, if I go and I say, hey, I'm that guy in Miami that drove you, like, I'm unforgettable. Mm -hmm. Like, I just got on, um, shout out to my friend, um, Chantel. Uh, Jeffries? No, 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 not Chantel. Um, Chanel, West Coast. Oh, Chanel. I just got on her new TV show. Oh, nice. Uh, you picked her up? Yes. That's so dope. She just uh, got a new TV show on MTV. So, yeah, I picked her up in style. But, yeah, so from Uber, I became the top driver in the world of Uber. There was nobody bigger than me. And I had to go to the next level. I had the two biggest celebrities in the world promoting me. Mm -hmm. I had Drake and I had Kim talking about me. I never met her. I love to. But just the fact that she talked about me on Food God and said, like, hey, come pick me up was enough to help me out, you yeah, know, I remember and just give happened. me credibility. Yeah, that's huge. You also picked up Neon recently. Who? Neon. Oh, yeah, Neon. Uh, yeah. I, I had a friend in Las Vegas. I don't know if you know Shawnee Styles. Yeah, he's been on the pod. The Man Boy yeah, Mafia. Yeah. He's got a crazy story. But he's good friends with Neon's manager. So he was like, he's like, Markley, Neon is at Disney World and he is stuck right now. You need to drop everything that you're doing, grab one of your buses and go to Orlando and get there. That's a in hike. enough time. Drive four hours to Orlando and go pick up Neon wherever he's at. That's a hike, bro. So I'm like watching the... The, I had never even heard of Kick at the time. And I'm driving like 80 miles an hour straight up to Orlando, hoping to catch him in time. And I finally caught up with Neon and I took him to Mike Busey's house. And we were shooting flamethrowers and stuff. So, <laughs> so the only way we were going to make that happen was to grab Neon and give him an experience so he would be distracted on his stream the whole time until we got to <laughs> mike busey's house that's crazy dude i like that you're willing to drop everything if, hey, if there's bro, a big moment like whatever that, that's a good whatever mindset. it takes to make it happen if it's meant to be it's up to me i gotta go make <laughs> happen and also it's cool i get to you know build a relationship with mike you know too. yeah we need to find someone like you on the west coast Hey, I'm willing to go everywhere, bro. <laughs> Let's go. You got Miami taking we're gonna, over. We're going to make a mobile podcast and we're going to drive everywhere. Yeah. No, that's that'd be dope. You should build a podcast studio in there, actually. Let's go. With your help, we'll make it happen. Yeah, you're probably going to be driving a lot of podcasters now because podcasts are blowing up, you know? I'm sure you already drive some, but... Yeah. Um, any other crazy stories or clients that uh, you remember? Somebody once, when I was driving Uber... Um, paid me $1,500 to drive them and take them to the most haunted house in Miami during Halloween. Hmm. Really? Just <laughs> I, to take them there? Yeah, I was kind of freaked out. I didn't really know like that there was an actual real famous haunted house in Miami and people want to sleep there. Oh, he wanted to stay there. He wanted to stay there. So did he make you wait outside the whole time? Yeah, he made me wait outside, and then he was like, no, no, I'm going home. <laughs> <laughs> it was that haunted? I guess it was that Jeez. haunted. I would though. do it for 1500 <laughs> Yeah, That's easy know. money. But I, I, didn't, I tried not to get too close to the house. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, he might bring back some ghosts yeah, or something. You got to sage the car after that one, man. Yeah. <laughs> he might have brought those ghosts in your car. Yeah. Dude, it's been cool. Anything uh, you want to close off with? Where can people book a ride with you? Um, uh, PullUpVIP.com. Yeah, so I'm excited. So after the whole Uber thing, I started my own um, transportation company, Pull Up VIP, and I built all my custom buses from the ground up. Nice. So that's how I like transitioned, and now I got my own factory in Indiana, so we can build a custom Sprinter van from start to finish, and uh, just really taking it over. And now I got some crazy projects. So I'm so soon becoming like the Elon Musk of buses. So mm. from start to finish, I can build you a bus from start to finish and do it in the most craziest way possible. Like you think of it, dream it. Like I just met up with Scott Storch, mm -hmm. famous producer yeah. of 
like working on building him a custom van. So it's just like anybody, if you have a dream, like I can help make that dream a reality for you and help build it the coolest way possible. Beautiful. And hopefully soon they'll give me my own show about building buses. Like pit my ride, but like pit my bus. I love it, dude. Also, let's shout out Coco Love too. Yes, Coco Love. Shout out to Coco Love. You've been Love. Uh, repping them on the East Coast, right? Yeah. So Coco Love's a new brand that I'm a part of. I'm so happy with it. It's the best tasting coconut water you'll ever try in the world. It has no added sugars, and it's just really amazing. We're really blowing this up. I'll Crazy. second that. We have it at the, the Vegas studio, and yeah. all the guests love it, dude. It's it's so amazing, and I love it. Yeah, not one guest has disliked it. Really? I've had on hundreds Do you have them people. nice and cold? Oh, yeah. We got them in the fridge. Wow. Dude, they're, they're really good cold, I will say, because I've had them warm temperature, mm -hmm. but cold is fire. Wow. Yeah. Shout out to Coca Love. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you, man. So Thanks much. for watching, guys. Peace.